Hello and welcome to this week's video. So today we're going to have a look at one of my favourite subjects, pocketeers. Now uh, we're going to have a look at the top five rarest and most valuable pocketeers to buy in the second hand market, but also my personal favourite best five pocketeers. Uh, just my personal choice, the games that I really love and what makes me love this series even more. So without further ado, sit back, relax and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start in reverse order now, initially, with the games that are perhaps the most valuable. Okay, not my favourites, but these are just uh, on reflection, looking at uh, completed auctions and what these generally go for. Uh, these are the most valuable and perhaps rarest of all the pocketeers. Um, so if you are deciding to collect them, you at least have an idea of just, you know, how bad the bad ones are going to be uh, for your wallet. Um, as a general rule, um, lots of box ones can be picked up for 10 to 15 pounds, 20 pounds, sometimes for absolutely exceptional condition with just a few of these. So if we look at this one, sometimes it's demand, sometimes it's just down to rarity. So this one here, which is Grand Prix, uh, tends to go for around the 30 pounds mark. And um, just while we're here, um, you know, you tell me if this is worth uh, thirty pounds. Uh, the actual game, I mean, I remember this one very well. Um, the, the cars are controlled by a magnet which rolls underneath, and um, it did vary who would be first past the post. So once again, which is a theme we've picked up before on Pocketeers, um, it's almost akin to uh, gambling. You could have a bet on who might be the first, who might be the first past the line, um, but. Um, it is quite a common theme. This is a few variations of this sort of magnet race game, you know, the Derby is uh, one that springs to mind. But um, this is a, is a cracking game. Um, certainly uh, uh, one of the rarer ones and one that seems to be quite fondly remembered. So expect to pay for this one about £30. OK, so the next one on our list is basketball. So um, basketball. Uh, there's a couple of versions of basketball. Uh, this is uh, the much, much harder one to get. Um, and I honestly don't know why. Uh, the basketball that's much more common is the two-player one that, you know, you have uh, a flick either end and you can play, sort of play against each other. This one is simply, um, you have to get the balls into the, uh, into, the, into the hoops there. And then that'll put it down. So try and get all the balls into the into the basket. I'm doing awful there. Before the timer runs out. There you go. I guess you could say I perhaps need a little bit of practice on that one. But this is basketball. And um, this one tends to go for about £50 when it does turn up for sale, which is pretty rare. All right. So... Bear that in mind, that could be a, a potentially a £50 purchase. Now, the next rarest one um, on the list is this one called Vampire. Um, now, I don't really remember seeing this one as a kid. Um, and certainly it took me a while to get. It's not mint. You see there's a little bit of wear there on the, uh, on the sticker. Um, I'm not 100% sure even how to pay it. Oh, there we are. I remember now. Vaguely. Yeah, quite a lot of mechanism to this one. Um, I wonder why this one's scarce. It was a tail end one for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely one of those uh, scarcer pocketeers. And I don't think I've ever, ever seen one in the world. Back in the late 80s when I started trying to pick up these and get a collection together, you could come away with a few every week. Uh, from the boot sales not so with um not so with vampire I never ever found that one now the next two i would say are equally rare and that is um blowpipe which is this fella and uh crossbow now um both of these are scarce and um i'm not going to get these out to assemble but we'll have a look at blowpipe first of all now, um, this uh, you know, was an early pocketeer, and it seemed to have just been around for those early days and then was just withdrawn. Um, and you can see the idea here. You would create a blowpipe, um, and you'd have some targets to, to shoot down. 
And the actual game itself came in this little box. And unlike a lot of Pocketeers, um, this one actually opened up and the contents was inside. And that's also what makes this so rare. Um, you've got your little darts there. So three little darts. This is just cardboard here. Um, and that's the bits to keep your blowpipe actually together. That is such a scarce um, toy. And when you think uh, this came out in 1975, 1976, um, it's hardly um, modern. You know, this really is a scarce little toy and uh, certainly one that I'm very happy to find. I found this and another one from a collector who um, had had them from brand new and had never ever used them amazingly um so i was quite quite lucky to get that i've no real reason why these have become so scarce uh, my only thought might be that because this one and um crossbow actually involved shooting stuff that potentially um you know it might have been a bit of a hazard and maybe palatoy who are obviously connected with um uh told me overseas maybe they just uh, had a warning about this saying some kid might have got injured or you know hurt his eye or something like that you can only imagine there must have been some reason why these only came out for a year or so um, and then they stopped maybe just literally the production costs so crossbow is perhaps one of the most elaborate ones ever when you think about it you actually are creating a miniature crossbow and once again this is one of those ones which open up like a little case and look at all the bits inside you've literally got your um that's cardboard again with the Pocketeers logo. You've got a little gun. Um, this is the elastic that would have been used on the, the actual crossbow. And then the darts there. I mean, that is so unusual and scarce. Um, you know, the, the price is, you know, that these tend to go for when they do turn up online. A really, really nice one. A realistic price for either of these would be about £85 each. However, you know, you might expect totally pristine ones, um, such as these two, which haven't even been on the shelf, uh, to maybe top £100 each. I mean, it's hard to tell. It's whatever, you know, anyone's willing to pay on the day. But, I mean, if these were the last ones left in your collection, you might be tempted... Uh, you might be tempted to uh, to pay a little bit more for them. Now, that's perhaps the rarest five in the series, although uh, one of the ones that does consistently go for good money is also my all-time favourite pocket here. So we'll look at my favourites now. So my all-time favourite is uh, Steeplechase. Now, there's no bones about it. Um, this is a lot of people's favourite ever pocketeer um simply because it was so intricate in america the tommy pocket games released it as a obstacle course and uh, it's such a i just remember spending hours on this one um and uh, i would always pick it up even to have spares of it um and you know even just playing it now brings back the nostalgia it wasn't easy but um it, it was a, just a great then it's the only movement it was an absolutely fantastic um game and uh i even remember trying to recreate some of these um in uh in school um so steeplechase perhaps the greatest ever pocketeer in my opinion anyway now because this isn't particularly rare however it is highly sought after because it's such a good one um, and this tends to sell for about 50 pounds for a really nice uh, boxed one i do remember when i picked this mint one up um someone in spain had found a whole load of uh, pocketeers there was five or six different ones and and he had multiple copies of them and they were like eight to ten pound each brand new on ebay and i just uh, picked them up i just wish i picked up uh, multiples of them there was also a small find um that at vectus auctions recently well i say recently it was about two years ago in 19 in sorry in 2000 and um 15 or 16 i seem to remember where um an ex palatoy employee had passed away and his star wars collection was up for sale and um in it were some cases of original pocketeers there was like six or seven in a case and um sadly i didn't get to win those because i already had them anyway so i didn't really put in much of a bid now uh the next one of of top five best possible pocketeers is uh, Rally. Now this one goes for about £35 in Nice Nick and I do remember uh, playing this one in the in the playground and you see it's basically um, you are controlling a car. So you see the little red red car on the map there and one one of these would move it one way and one would move it the other and you had to literally learn how to drive it around round the track 
And once again, there's a little magnet underneath. And when you think of the ingenuity of this back then, they're just fantastic, isn't it? You know, and this is very fondly remembered. Um, I'd hardly call it a rally, but it is certainly um, one of the rarer, uh, it's not rarer, but it's one of the most um, loved of Pocketeers. And uh, yeah, do keep your eye out for rally. Next one is uh, for me is one of my favorites is roll up. Now this is simply because it's it's just basically dexterity puzzles um, and there's four of them, so it's quite good fun. This is the classic. Um, this one here is like the pigs in clover, which was a a classic puzzle going back to the uh, the turn of last century um, with the classic maze there going in on itself. But then you had some other ones there, so there was literally um, four puzzles in one here. And they are actually really, really good. So um, this is fantastic play value. I always remember, and this <laughs> this makes me laugh, when I used to get these Pocketeers, when I was putting my set together, um, I always knew I'd had a Pocketeer turn up in the post because um, the packages would be rolling and my, my uh, postman would be wondering, what on earth has he got in there? You know, what on earth? Um, and then we've got um, Tremor. So this is another one of my, my favourites. Now, Tremor tends to go uh for not a lot of money maybe 20 pounds so you know for a really nice mint one again um and uh, this was simply um you use the this controller here to get the ball around the maze so i'm doing it freehand obviously just to show you how it works but you'd have to lay the, the pocket here flat and use the controller and that was much much harder to do um once again i i like the fact that they've got the um the pocketeers logo and even the tremor logo integrated into the actual game and that i love that plus the color is really mad as well that bright sort of pinky purple color is brilliant isn't it you know um so another one of my favorites and then the final one of my top five favorites and a few people would agree with me on this is uh is golf so um this was one of those ones where you could actually have a few rounds of golf. Um, uh, hardly the US Open, however, it was one of those ones you could set up. You had three pieces, basically, and you could set up the different holes. Um, so we'll have a little look at this. So once again, a bit like the earlier two, um, this op opens up and uh, you have your uh, you have your golf ball there and one's actually rolled off the table there but thankfully i can see it and uh, this would be your golf man and uh, you'd set up your three individual pieces that's your flag there i mean just incredible what uh, um what a toy for the money and you could have this in your pocket and so if you were particularly into golf um this would be the, the little fella to get you can see a little bit of wear on the green there <laughs> and these were just integrate together so you could fit fit them up and make different courses i mean what a fantastic fantastic idea um and then um you'd have your your golf your golfer as well and uh, he would have his uh golf club would go in here like this and this is how you would uh you'd swing swing your ball like that swing your your club rather and uh, hit it just amazing what a, how ingenious is that a really incredible uh incredible toy that one and um perhaps one of the greatest uh greatest of the uh, british pocketeers certainly for me it was a, a fantastic one so there you go what do you think then uh, would you pay 85 pound each for these i don't know some people seem to be uh I don't think I would, but then again, you know, I do love this series. If I only needed a couple, I'd probably splash out the money just to finish the set. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed that look at those Pocketeers. Um, do please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and uh, do subscribe to this channel for more similar content in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.